Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is former BYU quarterback standout NFL draft pick in the second round and a man who is currently training professional and college quarterbacks, John Beck. John, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. What's going on, fellas? Hey, man, what a week for the Cougars uh, coming off of a bye after beating a ranked Boise State team. And now they have an opportunity to go back to back wins against rivalry teams, which has been hard to come by under Kalani Satake. So, John, uh, as a onlooker from Southern California, what is the temperament of BYU football from your perspective? Well, I think it's a feeling of getting back on track, right? I kind of feel like through that first stretch of those first four games when BYU came out, you know, with some, some good wins, you know, I, I feel like they felt like they were in a good place. Okay, you know, we – we uh, won some games that were huge for us. We had some confidence. And then it was like there were these couple hiccup games, right? You have the Toledo game, the South Florida game, saying, wait a second. The, like, those were not supposed to happen like that, especially games that you feel where you were in control or you should have walked away with a win. So I feel like now after this, you know, Boise win, it's okay, look, now let's, let's get back on track because I think there's an absolute opportunity to win out the rest of the season. And a lot of it just starts with, putting another game, another win after this Boise win. See, John, I, I think that's the biggest question. This is something that I even asked Kalani yesterday at the, at the Monday press conference. How do you take a great performance like we saw against Boise State where everything was clicking, the execution was at such a high level. How do you take a great performance and make that the new norm and not just one game? Well, I think it just comes down to consistency. I think when you look at inconsistent teams, inconsistent teams can put it together for a game, but then they struggle to put it together for a stretch of games. And I think that's what separates the really good teams from just your kind of average college teams. I think if you went across America and you looked at, you know, a lot of the average teams, you'll find a game or two here or there where things clicked and things went well, and then a game or two where it didn't. And it just comes down to consistency. Are you able to repeat the efficiency level that you're playing at week in and week out. And look, there's no team that's going to do it for 13 weeks in a row. No team's going to do that. There's going to be games where, you know, certain aspects of the game plan, they don't work like you thought they were going to. There's certain things that you anticipated that now that defense isn't doing them and you've prepared all week for something and now you kind of have to make adjustments. And sometimes another mark of a great team is the ability when things aren't going well to be able to make a second half adjustment put it together in the second half to secure a win. So when I say efficient football, it doesn't mean all four quarters of every single game. It means the overall ability to be efficient when you need to be. And a lot of that comes down to like third downs, not turning the ball over, getting touchdowns in the red zone uh, instead of field goals, not turning the ball over, taking sacks in bad areas. So I think a lot of that just comes down to uh, being able to be repeatable with that consistency. And I'm sure that that's what BYU is looking for, saying, okay, how can we get this so that this happens weekly for us from here on out? Oh, man, here's to more consistency in what has been a largely inconsistent season. John Beck with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's ask you the question that everybody's asking themselves right now across BYU Sports Nation, and that is, who would you start at quarterback at Utah State given the unique situation for Baylor Romney and Jaron Hall? That's tough. Uh, it's tough because I, I'm – did Ben Criddle's show a few weeks back, and I just said, you know, one thing that the coaches know that none of us on the outside know is what it looked like on a daily basis between Jaron and Baylor, right? Like, was there a big gap between the two and the three, or was it a small one? Was that ever something where uh, the coaches considered that the number two job was up for grabs because it was such a close race between the two of them, and Jaron edged him out, and that's why he got it? Or or in their minds, was there a, a, a larger gap? And I know that now with the situation of, of Baylor beating Boise, it's really easy to say, hey, a guy came in, he played well, he got a W, let's roll with him. But that being said, you don't know what was that space between him and Jaron. Like there may be some things that the coaches feel like they can do offensively. There may be some things that they feel like Jaron is just better at, and that's why he got the nod for, for South Florida. If that's the case, I've seen this before on teams, right? A guy comes back, and it's automatically that guy's job, right? Because he didn't do anything to necessarily lose it. It wasn't like Darren was benched because of poor performance or because of poor decision-making. He didn't do anything wrong. He just got hit in the head. Now, 
Baylor goes out there and beats a ranked team, I can see why it's hard to, you know, say, well, let's let's not or let's not play him or let's play him. So, you know, I think it just comes down to what the coaches feel like this week. You know, what is the team going to do? Who is the team going to continue to kind of rise with? And if they feel like, hey, we have a great feeling right now with what happened with Baylor in the game, and the team is going to continue to rise with him, then I think you go with the guy that you feel like the team everybody collectively is going to continue this upward climb. John, you've been in this situation before in your time at BYU with Matt Berry and yourself, among others, Jason Beck. What's this like emotionally for a quarterback at BYU to kind of wonder who are the coaches going to go with? And uh, am I the guy? Well, my case there was surrounded by a lot of injury. It was like broken hands and all these weird things were going on. So, Ours was kind of like, except for the first game of the season and coming out of a fall camp, you know, we kind of knew who was likely going to be playing because either Matt broke his hand, I broke his hand, I separated my shoulder, you know, like those kind of things. When those type of things happen, when it happens with an injury and you know somebody can't play, well, then well then it's easy. But this one is, like I said, Jaron's performance against South Florida was not a bad performance. I know the team lost, but – the team was winning uh, for a lot of that game. And so he doesn't have any reasons why he shouldn't be playing other than health concerns. Baylor, I feel like, did a great job of just executing the game plan. And, you know, there's kind of like a limited uh, thing for us to look at of what he's able to do. But well, we've only seen him play in those four quarters of football, really, and then a little bit at the end of South Florida. So uh, it's – As a quarterback, you want to know if you're going to be playing so that you can practice and prepare that way. I think to kind of answer your question of what it feels like when you don't know, and I felt like this in the NFL a few times where our teams had lost and either I was going to become the starter because the coach might bench the starter or I was the starter but the team wasn't winning and then he's considering making a change. You're out there at practice sharing reps and you're up, the next guy's up, and you're both looking at each other like, do you know if you're going? Because I haven't been told anything. And vice versa, he's asking, well, have you been told if you're going? Because we're both trying to figure this out. And that's where I say that doesn't help the team rise. But you want to do, you want to make a decision, and then you want the team to be able to move forward so that they can all together continue this upward kind of like climb to get to the place where you can be more consistent. I just think it's really hard when you're splitting reps at quarterback all the time in practice how does that create a continuity for you to be efficient at the games? What do you make of this Utah State team, and, and what are your memories of playing the Aggies? I didn't. I never played them. My senior year, uh, I was coming off like I was playing injured, and they hadn't won a game in a long time. And uh, I was approached about saying, hey, we think it's best for the team if you sit this one out. So that was really the only time uh, that I would have had a chance to play against um, – the Aggies. But I mean, here's the thing. I've been impressed with their program. I have a lot of friends that are tight with the program. Um, I've been impressed with what their program has done over the last few years. I think it's a great program. Um, You know, I anticipated the Air Force game to go differently. I think that uh, I've seen Utah State play well in games. I've seen Utah State not play as well as I think some people thought they might have within the Mountain West. So I think it's going to be an interesting game because it's going to happen up in Logan. I know that that fan base is going to be fired up to play against BYU. I think the last time that BYU, or maybe the last two times, when was the last time BYU won up there? It's been a few years, hasn't 20, it? 2015, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, right now they probably feel like they have the edge. Like, there's guys on that team that have beat BYU before, but there's nobody on the BYU team that's beat Utah State before, right? Am I saying it all correctly? Uh, I, I'd have to look into that, but I think it's, yeah, that's probably pretty accurate that there aren't many guys that know what a, a victory is like against Utah State. Right. So even though Utah State didn't do well against Air Force, yeah, excuse me, Air Force, you just never know because there's those emotional things to the game. I would hope that BYU expects a really good Utah State team to play one of their best games of the year because it just kind of goes that way, right? They find a way to put it together. The coaches have put in some specific plays. They're looking forward to BYU. There's that in-state rivalry thing that they want to be able to once again say that, hey, of the teams in the state, we're the ones that are winning. Uh, So it's going to be a really, really, I think, highly emotional and contested game. I just hope that what BYU can do is that they can continue to build off of this Boise win because I liked what the team did. I felt like there were some really good play calls. 
I felt like the management offensively was really, really good, especially given the weather conditions. It's not easy to play uh, efficient football in bad conditions where you're not turning the ball over or there's sloppy plays here or there. And I feel like that's one of the things that helped BYU was they executed the game plan. Baylor did a really good job of not trying to go outside of himself or do too much in his first start, but just play within the offense and play within the game plan. And I think that BYU, if they just continue to play that way, I think that they can put themselves in a really good position to not only you know win but to do really well this week. John, it's I'm great to for. yeah, it's great to catch up with you again, man. As we say goodbye, give me the name that's going to start at B, for BYU against Utah State. Oh gosh, <laughs> I you know what? I'm actually not gonna. I'm gonna let us just you guys go to break. <laughs> the little red light is going to be flashing like we need to go to commercial. Get John off the phone, and then it's uh, it's like that little light in second meeting. Up, oh, I'm done. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> I love it, man. Hey, it's great to catch up with you, brother. All right, man. We'll see you guys.